Esther. Belfry here. Of You, Me, and Sicily. And on this episode, we're going to the province of Palermo to a beautiful village of Cefala Diana. The province of Palermo is not just the city of Palermo. The whole area is just abjectly beautiful, Esther. The scenery, the foods, you're gonna love it. Enjoy. That's for sure. Cefala Diana, a charming town in the province of Palermo, has been inhabited since the Roman period and probably before that by the indigenous people of Sicily. But one of the first recorded accounts of a village of Chafala is found in the 11th century. The area is noted for its agriculture and the remains of two ancient structures, the Norman castle and Arab baths. The castle was built around the 14th century by one of the most powerful families of Sicily, Chiaramonte, as part of a system of fortresses located on neighboring peaks. Because of its strategic location on a hill more than 600 meters high, overseeing a road between Palermo and Agrigento, whoever controlled the castle controlled the passageway. After many other feudal families owned the castle and the surrounding land, including the Abati, came Baron Niccolo Diana and his family that named the present-day town Cefala Diana in 1684. The panoramic views of the valley from the castle are breathtaking. And inside, there's a small museum worth visiting. Next, we went to the Arab Baths, a surprisingly well-preserved rectangular building with three separate pools filled with water from a nearby spring. The stories of when exactly this bath was built are mixed. While the Arab inscriptions on the wall may lead you to believe it was constructed during the Arab domination in the 10th century, actually the building with symbolic Arab arches was built between the 12th and 14th century during the Norman era. Remember, Sicilian Muslims were allowed to stay in Sicily, and the Normans even used their language, architecture, knowledge of math, and other assets to build structures, cathedrals, and in other areas. The baths were used separately for men and women, and both enjoyed the steam while sitting on rocks along the wall. Next, we stopped in the neighboring town of Marineo, set right at the foot of this incredible looking cliff or rock called Rocca. Again, we are blown away by the views from the castle of the valley. Straight ahead is the sanctuary of Santa Maria della Daina, built in the 1500s, bombed during World War II, but recently rebuilt. Now a lovely drive through the largest forest in western Sicily, the Ficuzza Forest Natural Reserve or Bosco della Ficuzza. Beautiful. Next, off to the DeMarco olive farm just outside the main city center. The DeMarco family grows, harvests, and mills 100% Sicilian olive oil. While they have been producing olive oil for only about 25 years, the family has owned this land with olive and other types of trees for over two centuries, passing it down one generation to the next. L'olio è prodotto da Since a young age, Pino, the father, has had a passion for olive and olive oil. So when the economy allowed him to switch careers from construction, he built this oleficio right on the farm. The DeMarco sell to vendors around Palermo and export to the United States. It is here we are treated to a mouth-watering meal including products picked right on their farm and typical meats and cheeses from the area. It's un formaggio pecorino locale. Quindi il latte viene prodotto in questa zona e il formaggio viene prodotto in questa zona. Questa zona è una pancetta prodotta pure nella nostra zona, quindi è un prodotto di, di locale. Olive raccolte da noi. Stiamo rostendo la salsiccia. Salsiccia. Mauro, the sun was the Eastman ah. on the grill. Questo è il pollo, è rotolato con sottopancia, ripieno di mollica e cipolla. Alfred, who's an expert on olive oil, did a little taste test for us. In these particular um, 
olives are very indigenous to this area over here. So we're going to just see what it looks like here. And just see how the notes are. It's got a nice, you can tell right off the bat it's going to be a little bit peppery. Take a look at it. It's more of a goldish gold than it is uh, green. And then when you taste oil, you just put a little bit in your tongue and you inhale it like this. And you want to see if there's anything in the back, if it, the peppery finish. This is a nice, this is a good, a good quality oil. Uh, I would use it for fish, I would use it for meat, salad, things like that. We met the DeMarca family thanks to a connection with their family living in the United States. Their story is like so many others, grandparents who left their beloved Sicily seeking a better future in the United States. But no matter the distance, it is a bond that is bound by blood, earth, and yes, olive oil. You know, Alfred, one of the things that I love about doing these episodes are all the great people that we get to meet all over the island. I love the history that every single solitary town has. It's just profoundly amazing to me. If you've enjoyed this episode of You, Me, and Sicily, check them all out at www.youmeandsicily.com. Don't forget Facebook, Esther. You, Me, and Sicily. Here we go. <laughs> Ciao. See you next time. Peace.